Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is the day. I've been wanting to do this video pretty much ever since Chevy did the unveiling of a four cylinder turbo for the Silverado. And I am extremely excited to be able to max this truck out. If you did not watch the last video, I did get the truck and trailer weighed. And I got a lot of the specs on this build in that footage too. So if you want to pause, Go back and watch that video first. That might be better because I'm not going over any of that stuff. Today is just impressions, zero to sixties, and grade climbing. Let's get started. We are all strapped in, change cross, breakaway switch, couplers locked in. I have this Kurt Bluetooth, uh, which we call it, trailer brake controller because this truck does not have one built in. By the way, for a Chevy Silverado, it's only 275. Just get that option if you're building your truck. And yeah, we're pretty much ready to go. Tires are aired up on truck and trailer to max. And by the way, you guys probably can't tell. Well, you can probably tell from here. This truck is squatting pretty good. And that's probably because it has the off-road suspension. But I'll show you guys some of the squat here in a second. And yeah, we're pretty much ready to go. I did drive the truck earlier this morning to get it warmed up. So we're pretty much at operating temp. Let's go. We're reset with the trip one. I just refilled. I reset the trip one and we're gonna get down the road. I am really excited. And I am so glad that I aired up the tires today because like I said yesterday guys, man, this short wheelbase is not what you want. Let's talk about that for a second. Anytime you're looking at your tire capacity, they're always gonna say a number on there, but that's gonna be max PSI when the tire's cold. So what I like to do is, before the sun hits the tires, I get my air pump, air up the tires, and that's how you can get the best performance on your tires. If you do it after a drive, as you guys know, air does expand and contract. So once it heats up, you're not gonna have an accurate reading. So you're gonna have a tire pressure that's going to be a lot higher than what it's really showing so I would always recommend doing that beforehand and as far as this truck goes this is a really good performing truck at low speeds <laughs> let's, let's just be honest here at low speeds this four cylinder turbo is great once you get over 50 miles an hour this truck gets too light and it only weighs like about 50 100 pounds on the curb somewhere in that ballpark so you're gonna really have to consider a standard bed. I'm not sure if you can get a standard bed with a Trail Boss, but you're gonna want that standard bed, guys. You need that wheelbase. And LT tires for sure. These tires should be fine for the most part, but I probably would want something with a little bit more capacity personally, maybe like 3,000 pounds or a little bit more, maybe a 10-ply tire. But overall, I do feel a little bit more stability, but I'm only going 50 miles an hour. And let's go ahead and talk about these mirrors too. These mirrors are actually pretty dang good because you have a convex, so you can see around the truck really, really well. However, on this side, GM decided to cheap out and not put a convex on the side. And I really think they should have it. I think Ram does it on both sides. So they should make that convex at least a part of the tow package because it would be beneficial. Like, I don't like the tow mirrors, guys. They look goofy on these half tons. Like, I've seen it in a couple times. I'm like, woof, that does not look good. So I do prefer to have these. So they just need to add that convex on the passenger side. But you can see around the trailer really darn good. I am in tow haul mode. I wanted to make that clear because I was not earlier. And we're doing pretty dang good on fuel economy, but we're only going 45, 50 miles an hour. So this doesn't really count. But guys, let's talk about this real quickly. 8-speed transmission is behind this 2.7 four-cylinder turbo. If you get the 5.3 or the 6.2 or the 3-liter diesel, you get the 10-speed. I don't know why they did not at least make it an option to get the 10-speed behind this engine. I feel like it's missing a gear somewhere. I feel like it. And it, it could be in my head. At low speeds, it's not a big deal. But when you get into like the higher RPMs and when you start getting the higher speeds, you start to feel like there's something missing there. But it, it could be in my head because I know that that 10-speed does perform well. But I do like the fact that you can get that 5.3 in the 6.2. And that's probably what I would pick. 
And I think really where the issue lies is, this is a four cylinder. Unloaded, this truck is pretty peppy. Loaded up, which you're gonna see here, it's a four cylinder truck. Here is zero to 60, towing 9,000 pounds. As you guys saw that zero to 60 footage, you know, it does well between zero and about 40 miles an hour. But if you're just cruising along on the highway, good luck. Good luck, guys. That's the only thing I'll say. And that, that's why I think this truck kind of needs, you know, one or maybe two extra gears. It might only need one extra gear personally, but you'll see here in a second because we're about to get to the grade. Like, like I said, down low, this truck has a lot of grunt. But up top, this is a four-cylinder pickup truck towing 9,000 pounds. Let that sink in for a second. I'm going just at 60 miles an hour. And the tires do make a difference. But the truck is dancing like left and right. It's like going like this. And the reason why is because of the wheelbase, guys. Like, and this truck is lifted too. It has a two inch lift over the regular Silverados. So that's gonna be an effect. And obviously, because it's an off-road truck, it has a softer suspension. So, I mean, I, I don't know how to say it. This is not a good truck for towing, personally. And as people have asked me in the past, what do you think about, you know, half tons lifted or even HDs lifted? I don't think that a lift really affects it at about two inches or less, but it really depends on your setup. Like if your suspension is just an off-road suspension and they didn't really tune it for, you know, for towing, it's gonna feel really soft. And you kind of see that with the squat in this truck. Like this truck squats a good bit. And yeah, at 50 miles and less, you don't really notice the difference. Tire pressure does make a difference, but you can feel the trailer it's like it's just pulling this truck left and right and you can't really fix it the only way you can really fix a lot of um sway from a trailer is obviously uh having a weight distribution hitch now obviously if you do have a lot of trailer sway what you do is you have to use your trailer brake to apply the brakes back there and just keep driving that'll straighten the trailer up a little bit but Honestly, it's not bad enough out back to where you have to do that. It's just this truck is too light, has a short wheelbase, and it's not really set up for this type of application, especially towing, you know, 9,000 pounds. You guys see that <laughs> wow this truck it did pretty darn good like i said guys from zero to about 50 no problem above 50 miles an hour it struggles and it just runs out of steam i mean you only have four cylinders and that turbo can only do so much but that wasn't bad i i, I give it to it that that was a six percent grade and i did it from a dig so I didn't look at the performance numbers, but you guys obviously saw everything, so I don't have to explain it. But yeah, I was, I'm happy with this truck around town towing. If you're you know, maybe going 45, 50 miles an hour, you're not really getting on the highway. Oh, this is a great truck. Now, the other issue I have with this transmission is there are no downshifts whatsoever. So you have to do a manual downshift. The tow haul mode is really there for 
I would say the higher RPMs when you're starting from zero. But that was going up a steep grade, guys. That was really good. 9,000 pounds, well, it's 8,600 pounds if you didn't watch the last video. That's exactly what's back there. But um, yeah, I'm happy with that. I would say that if you were towing about 7,000 pounds or less, it would probably be about the same. It wouldn't really make a difference, I would say. And <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really surprised that it did well. Now, I destroyed the fuel economy. I'm at 9.1. Um, I was at like 10 something before we started and I literally dropped the mile per gallon. But we're gonna get on the highway here in a second and we'll see how well the truck performs there and then that'll pretty much in this video. I hope you guys liked it so far. I don't recommend a four cylinder turbo. I mean, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I, I think that for my applications of how I use my trucks, I'm always gonna go on the highway at some point. So I want something that can get the job done. I think having four more cylinders with less power would do better than this truck. And I just have to put my money where my mouth is and just go rent a 5.3 liter uh, Silverado and tow with it. That's what I have to do. And then we have to try to get a diesel. Um, this truck, the owner said 85 was fine. I, I don't do 85 for towing videos, so I try to burn out as much as the gas as I could. And then I filled it back up with 91 because when you're doing this type of towing, especially with this little engine, you need this thing to be operating at peak performance. And this truck definitely needs that. So, oh, actually, let's look at something too. Okay, so the transmission temperature is at 212. Yesterday, like at peak time during the day, it was at 219. And I was out there doing a few climbs on some grades. But all in all, like you're towing a small boat or even like a five or 6,000 pound trailer, I think this is a great option for you. But if you're gonna be climbing a lot of grades, especially like for long periods of time, this truck's gonna struggle. Like it won't shift out of, um, I don't know what gear it was in. It won't shift out of probably fifth gear, maybe fourth or fifth gear, somewhere in there. It's just gonna sit there. And that's the problem you're gonna have with this truck is it's just not enough power. It's not enough displacement. There's no replacement for displacement. I don't know who said that, but it was fact. Now we're gonna go on the highway. You guys can kind of see the acceleration. Yeah, so at flat ground, it does perform pretty well between 50 and 60. But once you get up a grade, and I think there's a grade gonna be coming up here in like the next five or so minutes. So I'll show that to you guys. Transmission's getting a little warm. And it's only 70 degrees outside. And it's morning time here, so there's no humidity or nothing. So 216, it's just, you know, it's kind of fluctuating there, but. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and let off the gas. I don't think that it's in eighth gear. It's probably like in sixth gear or seventh gear, one of the two. I want us to go ahead and set the cruise control at 65. Like I said, that's all of it in this truck. This truck, you can't go 70 miles an hour. Like it's, it's swaying. But yeah, if it was windy today, oh man, it would be, it'd be a little hectic. But so far, so good. If you stay in this lane here at 65 or less, it does a pretty darn good job. And yeah, I think it just locks you into either sixth or seventh gear because you have to stay within the broadband. Now I'll check back in in a second, guys, when I get to that grade, so you guys can kind of see the RPMs and the speed as I accelerate. So here it is. I'm gonna drop down to about, I don't know, maybe 50 miles an hour. I wanna show you guys the, the speed. Wherever it is, there it is, speed. All right, so 54, here we go. Not bad. So this grade is not as steep 
So it's doing a lot better job. Not bad at all. I guess I'm just being picky because it's a four cylinder. <laughs> Man, guys, I was going about 69.7 to pass that truck. Whoa. Yeah, even having the tires aired up, this is way too light for this kind of weight, guys. So, obviously, weight distribution hitch, man. Ooh, that was, my heart started racing because, you know, this Bluetooth device for the trailer brake is not the best option because you need to have a trailer brake right here you need it so there's a button you can buy if you get this thing you gotta get that button because i needed it to keep that trailer straight it was going back and forth man my heart is like racing guys Woo. Woo. man it was scary and we're going downhill too so let me drop it down into a lower gear so i don't speed up too much yeah even 65 miles an hour is too fast yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm always going to buy an HD truck. <laughs> oh, man, that was scary. Oh, my goodness. Whew. Man, sorry, guys. I, was, I really got scared for a second. <sighs> but, yeah, HD trucks for me. All I'm going to buy. By the way, you get extra clicks when you have a trailer go too. I didn't know if I said that yet. Here are the RPMs for downshifts. This transmission is pretty heavily protected. So you can't really get the RPMs you need to slow the trailer down. So you're gonna really have to keep the gain up on your trailer brake. And yeah, you're gonna have to be ready to stop because this truck does not help any with the transmission but we're gonna go ahead and fill up i'm gonna pull into the gas station here in a second and we'll see what the mpg is so so far for the trip one it's showing we're at 10.3 or 10.2 now at 25 miles driven all righty guys i just topped off let me show you guys where we topped off at here so 25.2 divided into 2.21 oh wow so we got a little bit better we got a little bit better in the computer actually 10.2 versus 11.4 so as i said in the last video i uh i didn't get better than the computer on the pump because i did some idling and a lot of stop and go not a lot of stop and go but we were at like a lot of stops a lot of red lights things like that so that does affect the computer a little bit but yeah that's not bad guys so wow 11.4 i may have to do that same route with my diesel and see how it does because as you guys saw in the video i did my uh duramax did not do that great coming back home but it was a lot colder though so that's probably why so that's why this one did a little bit better okay so i have a confession to make God bless America, but it's really windy. It's not really windy. It's like 14 mile an hour wind today. So where I'm at in Utah, it's not windy. Out here in Draper, Utah, it's windy. So that's what I was feeling coming down that mountain, especially coming down that high of a grade. It gets a little bit more windier out there. So that's what I was feeling. But nevertheless, guys, you know, hey, if you're gonna be towing this kind of trailer, you need to get an HD truck, I'm just saying. But I hope you guys liked the video. I hope that it was entertaining. I never showed you guys any braking. I never do because the trailer does most of the braking for the trailer. And then of course the truck does its job too. But um, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure your bell notifications are on. I'm gonna try to get a diesel in the half ton segment for the Silverado soon. And we'll test that bad boy out and see how it does. But yeah, uh, this truck does look good in front of a trailer. But I don't know if I would recommend this setup for towing this heavy. So if you want a truck like this, get a standard bed. Do not get the Trail Boss, get the regular Silverado and get the tow package. And I think that that truck would do a lot better. And also a weight distribution hitch is always gonna be your friend.